What we are going to look at today is this old East German radio, which has a bit of an interesting history uh, behind it. It's a very Cold War communism kind of thing. Uh, it's actually very interesting. So, um, this is the front. You see, it just has a tuning knob here. I pre-loosened those, so I don't have to make an ass out of myself while trying to unscrew those on camera. Um, and a volume knob. And also there's an indicator here that tells you that it's on. But this, if you can read German, this is not... It doesn't say tuning. It, it's basically a fine-tuning knob. Because, as we'll see later, this thing can only pick up one station. It's made to pick up exactly one frequency. Um, let's look at the back. It's a nice sort of Bakelite case. Um, I also took the screws off here. Um, so, same reason as with the knobs. Um, let me just unthread this. It's actually very nicely built. Um, but, yeah, it had to be. It has a big capacitor here. This is the main filter cap. It's loose and also quite probably bad. This needs to be replaced. Selenium rectifier down here. Fuse here. I don't know what it is. Oh, yeah. Someone put it. Someone sorted two wires to this. I think this is probably. This has been connected. And. Um, yeah. This is not great. Someone just put a wire on here and it has melted because the capacitor is bad. So let's just hope it didn't take a power transformer which sits here. Um, it is built on a printed circuit board here. Um, <clears throat> and it has a fairly unusual layout for radio. Um, well, for European radio. It uses one, two, three, four, five, six tubes. This is a double diode, probably the detector tube. Um, these are all EF89s, if I remember correctly. Yes. And they basically do all the HF stuff. So let's just get that back in. Under here, I'm not going to lift this shield. There's a double triode. There has to be. And one of the really interesting thing is, things is, um, this uses, um, let's say, ECL82 as a combined um, preamp and output tube, which was not common in radios, but this is, obviously this is quite modern, um, so just, I'll Look at the socket, it goes in like this. This thing about these PCB sockets, you can never see how to get your tube back in. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So, what has to be done to this? I have to replace this capacitor. Um, there's probably also a variable cap under here. Luckily enough, the dial string is intact because everybody who deals with old radios knows dial string is the worst thing. If you have to replace a dial string, many people just throw the radio away. I'm not one of those, but yeah, re restringing is terrible. Uh, voltage selector here. So, what is this thing? So, this is basically... Um, a radio receiver for government use. If you were high up in the party, as far as I understand it, there's limited information on the internet about this. Um, and I haven't paid uh, radiomuseum.org's um, member fee. So I am somewhat limited in what I know. Also, they have a schematic for this, which, yeah, I'm, I'm keen to have that. But, yeah. Um, and you would receive... 
well, just sort of government emergency messages on this. You would always have that on and have it sitting on your office desk. If you're some sort of Communist Party important person, and then it would transmit things like, yeah, World War Three has started, and we're bombing the imperialists for all we've got, and the world is basically over now. So, this is what this does. Um, it's fairly useless today, because it receives somewhere in the 50 megahertz-ish band, and there's always, there's nothing there, and you, you can't tune very far. You can tune like 0.2 of a megahertz or something. Um, so, but we'll still restore this, and um, thanks to the honor signal generator that I restored in, in the last video, we could actually um, dial this in and see if it works, and then we we'll, can even play some audio from it and see how it sounds. So, yeah, what I'll do first is I'm going to turn this around again. And then I'm going to replace this filter cap and just see what it does uh, once this is replaced. Maybe that's all that has to be done to that, although I am almost certain that there is a bunch of electrolytics down here. I'll have to figure out how to get this PCB out. I think you can actually pull out the whole chassis. We'll see. So I'll just try and pull the chassis from this on camera. which should be accomplished by just getting out those four screws. One of them is actually missing down here. Um, well, don't have to tell you that um, this has seen better days. Although for something that survived the fall of the German Democratic Republic, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, especially yeah, if this was some sort of political thing, number bob. Come on. I don't necessarily like on uh, uh, like working on on two radios that have PCBs in them. There. Oh, this is actually this comes out nicely. I'll drop the screw. But yeah, the quality of the printed circuit board material that they used. It actually felt. Um was very bad back in the day and especially with the with the tubes getting hot and scorching the material all day. Um it's usually not easy to repair and to get stuff out. So but luckily enough there's only there's a capacitor here flaking off. There's a capacitor here that needs to be changed. Here. Can't see what that is. This looks... yeah, we'll see. What I'm trying to do first is I'm trying to get this electrolytic out here. Might as well screw it over there. Um, two connection and ground is connected why this ring to the chassis. Um, it's a bit it's a bit hard to get to, but I'll get it out. The electrolytic out and it's a standard 50-50. Does it focus? Um, so we're going to replace it with um, two 47s at 400 volts. And how you do this is you just solder them together like this. So you have one common negative side that you're going to tie to the chassis and then you've got two of those and you're going to make that a bit prettier off camera but it's basically and then you've got two fifties here and here and that ties to the two reds and the yellow wire respectively. What I did with that capacitor is I put the two 47s down here and soldered them on to the respective terminals and then for the common wire, I made a little lug out of a well, fairly thick, super stiff wire. Sort of a lug on here. And this is um, 
the negative terminal from the selenium diode. I think it uses one way rectification, by the way. Um, and this goes down here and joins up with the common, also holds it in place. It's actually fairly good. Um, I might still um, put a cable tie on there to, to keep it in place. So I think I'll just try and turning this on and we'll see how it goes. Actually one thing I forgot to replace is um, this resistor which is part of the RC filter that basically keeps the keeps the power somewhat clean. Um, and it goes right in between those two sections here. I'll just try and solder this on. Where it getting loose? I will need some more solder. No. So I need to get the wire out of the back so it doesn't burn. Yeah, it looks alright. Yeah, we can turn it on now. And we'll see. We'll bring it up slowly on a variac. Um, we'll just see. There goes the power cord. And down the variac to. Well, let's turn it down to 100 volts or so. And then we also need to turn this on. And I'll see nothing yet. So I'll turn this around again. Being careful not to touch anything. Yeah, this probably gives you a better look of it. So I'll just slowly ramp this up. And we should actually see something by now. Oh no, we can't. I'll turn the very act down again. Because I took out this fuse. The the fuse that someone bridged with a piece of wire. I'll have to replace that. Um, unfortunately, I think it doesn't say on the chassis. Oh yeah, it says. 0.3 amps. So I'll replace that real quick. Fuse is replaced. I'll put the variac down to, what, 100 volts again? And we'll see what happens now. Nothing yet. It is on. And it's plugged in. Maybe 100 volts is not enough to light up this indicator. We'll see. Just give it some more volt. Oh, there we go. This is actually fairly nice. It's huge. This burns out, I'll never be able to replace it. Oh yeah. This actually doesn't sound bad at all. Well, I'd say just for for fun, let's try and plug in the signal generator and see. So I have done this in the crudest possible way. I'm just going to turn it back on again. Um, I just clipped the antenna wire and the ground wire from the owner to this. And I'm not even exactly sure if this works, especially not at that high a frequency. I just turn this down. Fiddle with the knobs a bit. No, this doesn't seem to work. I just maybe I'm wrong about uh, frequency. Let's 
Okay, there is something. Oh, there my there 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 it is. That's the signal from Yona on just right around 10 megahertz. I'm just going to turn this off for a second while I um, put the honor to external and I'll just connect another signal generator, a square wave generator to, to the audio in and we'll just see if, if this is actually a signal. So we'll just vary it a bit um, from 50 to, to 5 kilohertz, 50 hertz to 5 kilohertz, and then we'll see if it still sounds like that. Yeah, this works fine. I mean... It's not... Wait. I think I just lost it there. It's a bit touchy. Yeah, but there it is. I think this will still profit from um, having all its caps replaced. Um, once I have a schematic, I'll actually, maybe these electrolytes, which are probably for the output tube, I'll probably replace right now, so, um, but yeah, once I have a schematic, I can work on this further, but it's really nice that it works. I mean, I just replaced the filter cap, and it did work right up. Great. So, what I did on top of that is, I replaced those two electrolytics here. Um... Now why don't you just look at this is um I think I actually found the tuning cap. Which this is truly amazing. Um I think this is the tuning cap. This is just the difference between having the metal well the metal rod there versus you have this cutout opposed to this thing is what what's doing all the tuning. It's very simplistic. I like that. Um, I looked at all of those caps, and as far as I can see, under the layers of dust, those are all either um, foil caps or those these things down here, which I'm not sure about those. They are some sort of plastic paper I think it's actually like a paper cap but they sort of impregnate it with resin um, anyway it seems to work I'm not going to change those if I don't have to